Hello, artsy doodlers. Miss Becky, I'm so excited that you're here for summer camp. So what we are gonna do first is get out our clay. So in your magic box, and the magic box is that big box that has all the goodies inside. So get out the bundle of clay, and then I want you to just split it in half and take half of it and I just want you to knead it. So just keep playing with it like this. It's gonna take a little bit of time for it to soften, but we wanna get our clay nice and soft. This is what we are going to be working toward making today. So it's a little sea turtle. Everything today is sea turtle themed. So this is a little clay sea turtle. And if you um, have mom or dad available to grab you a little bowl with some water in it, that would be helpful. And some napkins. And then I just want you to keep playing with your clay. Some other things you're gonna need today would be your how to doodle a sea turtle sheet, which was in the email that your family should have gotten. And then this little book, and some of yours might be different colors. And your graphite pencil, because we're gonna use that for some doodling. If you are looking in your magic box for that, you'll find that in the bag that has like the colored pencils. There's an eraser in there, a pencil sharpener, all that good stuff. So we're gonna learn how to doodle a sea turtle today too. So once you keep playing with it, if you have water handy and your clay starts to feel dry, dip your fingertips in the water and sort of brush that and keep on squeezing it. Now once you get your clay pretty soft, you can go ahead and break off another piece that might be about this big because that's gonna be the head of the turtle and the arms and legs too. So we're gonna, gonna create, oh, and the tail, yeah. Couple other things to think about. If you, I use my fingernail to scratch but you can also use your pencil to draw little designs in our clay. Um, but if you have a toothpick handy or if mom or dad or grandma or someone can help you get a toothpick, that would be helpful too. Um, see how I drew little circles on my shell? Some people use straws to make polka dot like perfect circles um, in the clay. You could do that too. So get creative you know look around and see what you can use to help you um, with your craft today all right so I have my second piece nice and soft let the other clay just sit in um, the bag you can make something out of that later we tried to pack you more than enough so that you might create something else um, later as well so now what we're gonna do is create the shell part. So take the bigger chunk that you that you um, were molding and, and softening, and we're gonna turn it into, and if you look, it's humped right here and hollow in the inside. So we're gonna do that first. So take the piece of clay and sorta of roll it into a ball. So I mash it and then roll it and see how I have it in my hand and I'm just sort of rolling it like this. And then you're gonna stick your thumb up in there. So just take your thumb, poke a hole in there and then I want you to start pinching it. So see how I'm pinching it? It's like making a pinch pot if you've ever done that before. At school sometimes you make pinch pots in art class but look at how my um, clay is cracking a little bit. It's getting dry, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to it. So you don't want too much water that it's you know muddy and drippy, but just enough that it's gonna help you work with that clay a little easier. And you're gonna smash this all out. Now the thicker that you make your turtle shell, the longer it'll take to dry, but you certainly don't wanna make it so thick that, 
or so thin that your finger goes through it because you wanna you want it to be thick enough that it's gonna not break on us. Now, if you get any cracks along the way, see how I have a couple of little cracks right here? Just take your finger, dip it down in the water, rub it on there, and then sort of blend it in so that that crack disappears. See how I'm just rubbing my finger along the edge? The less cracks you can have in it, the more durable it will be during the drying process. And then I'm also making sure there's no cracks in the inside too. See in the inside, it's like a little pot, huh? Yep, so go all around and sort of blend any cracks together that you might have. Put a little water on your finger and blend those together. Now once you have your shell, your turtle shell molded, then you can just set that aside because we're gonna work on the arms and the legs next and the head and the tail. And feel free to pause your video anytime you need to catch up before um, I move on to the next step. You can always pause it and come right back or just let me keep talking and then you can catch up as as we go no worries all right so I have my turtle shell all done I'm gonna set it aside now I'm gonna take that other piece that I had softened and I'm gonna pull off a chunk that's gonna become the turtle head so see how that part right there is all the turtle head. So I'm gonna roll it in a ball first. And then I'm gonna smash it down. See how I'm sort of smashing it like this? And then I'm gonna take my fingers and pinch it so that I can get a more narrow part down here and a wider circle up top. So I'm just pinching it now I'm gonna pinch it flat. I'm cracking a little, so I'm gonna put a little water on there. You have to not mind getting dirty when you're playing with clay, huh? I'm a little muddy. All right, there we go. So that's gonna be my turtle head, right like this. The reason we need to have that neck on there is because the neck is sort of inside the shell, right? So we want to be able to, we're going to mold it to the bottom here so that it stays attached to the shell. So we're going to use that neck part to be the part that we mold. Then you're going to pull off another little piece of clay. Same thing, roll it. And then it's very similar to the shape of the head. It's just a little bit more narrow, right? And it's sort of shaped, we called it this morning, we called it an eyebrow. It sort of looks like an eyebrow, right? So we're gonna make two arms. If it's cracking, just add a little bit of water to it. Mine was cracking a little. And then to get the curve, like the eyebrow, I'm sort of just gonna bend it right like this, right? And that's gonna be my turtle's one arm. And then I'm gonna do another arm and two legs and a tiny little tail. See the tail? You never wanna make your pieces too small. A lot of people will make their pieces really small and then they break so much easier. So don't make it so thick that, that it's gonna take six months to dry, which it wouldn't, but you know what I mean. We wanna keep it 
like this consistency for a leg, an arm. See when I squeeze it, it gets a little thicker. That's okay too. And my back legs are smaller than my front arms. So you won't need quite as big of a piece of clay. Okay, so I have a tail, two big arms, two smaller legs, and I have my shell. Now, we're going to use a method that's called scratch and attach. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and take the bottom part of the shell. Think about the spot where the head should be, right? I'm thinking that the head should pop out right here. And you're gonna take your fingernail, or if you don't like the feel of your, using your fingernail, get a little toothpick or the, the sharp tip of a pencil. All right, so see how I scratched it up? It's like making a bunch of tic-tac-toe boards, right? And then I'm gonna take the piece that I made my head and on the top part of the neck, I'm gonna also scratch. So tic-tac-toe boards to scratch it up. Then once I have it scratched, now I'm gonna dip my finger in water and put some water in those scratches, right? And I'm gonna attach it like this to the part where I scratched on the turtle shell. So when it's starting to attach, see how I've placed it right there on top of those scratches? Dip your finger in water and then you just wanna blend that in so that on the top see behind his neck that spot should be blended as well as down inside here see how well i've blended that area you want to have it seamless so that it's less likely to break and you might even have to play a little bit on the sides here, right? Nice, you could even get your little finger in there if you need to. You guys have nice tiny hands, so you might be able to get it right down inside there. All right, so there's my head attached. And now I'm gonna attach the arms to the front, same method, scratch it first. And then scratch the arm. Scratch the arm. Add the water, just a little drips of water. And then attach it right on the same way that we did attach the head. And see how his arm is a little bit bent right there? Blending it in so that you can't see where the two are joined. And then you're gonna put your two back feet on, your tail and your other arm, okay? Once you have all of that done, the thing that I always fear is that the shell is gonna cave as it's drying. If you made this, too, this shell part pretty thin, I would recommend that you bunch up a piece of newspaper or a paper bag or something and bunch it up and set it underneath here as your clay is drying to sort of make sure that that hump stays intact. It's gonna begin drying pretty quick. So by the end of today, you'll probably see it's dried some you know but it'll still be very cold and there'll be water still in it we want to let all the water evaporate 
And then you can take your pencil and you can draw your designs on your sea turtle. So I did two little lines around the outside and then I drew on the shell also. So you can go ahead and finish up your turtle. If you need to pause, by all means, go ahead. Once you have your turtle all done, then I want you to set it on a paper plate or set it somewhere safe that it can dry. And I want you to wash your hands and then get out, a, get out your sketchbook, your graphite pencil, um, and your how to doodle a sea turtle worksheet. And we're gonna work on that next. I'm gonna go wash my hands. Okay, so I wash my hands all up and I have my graphite pencil. When you look inside your magic box and you found the booklet, this is your little sketchbook. And then there's also colored pencils so you can color in anything that you've drawn. There's also um, uh, your graphite pencil. There's a big eraser because these pencils don't have erasers on them. So there's a big artist eraser in there for you. And then uh, what else is in that particular bag? I think that might be it. All right, so I want you to go ahead and get out your book. You're gonna see that we drew this turtle this morning and I'm gonna draw it with you as well. So I'm gonna turn to page two. I want you to doodle up after we're all done with our session doodle a cover for your sketchbook. So anything you want, it could be ocean themed if you want to do ocean theme. Um, but you're, we're gonna be putting surfboards in here tomorrow, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm gonna start, um, I want you to start on the first page. I'm gonna start on the back of the first page because you do wanna use the front and the back so that you have as many pages for doodling as possible. So how to draw a sea turtle. So what you wanna do first is we're gonna make this little egg shape here, right? Now you'll notice down at the bottom, see where the tail is? It's a little bit more narrow and up top it's wider. So I want you to draw an egg shape like this, okay? All right, next we're gonna put the head on. The head sort of is a circle with a neck, right? So if it makes it easier for you to draw a circle first and then add the neck on and erase this line at the bottom of the circle, feel free to do that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and start here and it sort of curves around. Every sea turtle's different, so don't worry if yours looks a little wonky. You're gonna see one of my arms is longer than the other. It's okay, they're all, we just have fun drawing. You don't have to make it perfect. All right, so the next thing after the head, we're gonna draw on the two arms. I think that the arms look like chicken wings. <laughs> so see the shape here? Again, if it's easier for you to draw a circle, or sort of looks like a duck face, huh? Look, a duck face. So you're gonna, you wanna draw a curve and it gets real skinny right here. Same thing, this is like his arm is bent right here and you bring that up. And then you're gonna do two smaller versions of that for feet. And then I just did a tiny triangle for the tail. So I'll hold that there for you while I go ahead and start drawing on just in case you don't have yours printed out. No worries. We don't stress. And then I'm gonna do two feet. 
and then a little tail. So two arms, two feet, and a little tail. Two arms, two legs, two feet. I almost, two arms, two feet, and a tail. Get myself all confused, huh? My one arm looks like spaghetti, so I'm gonna redraw that one. So use your eraser if you need to, but don't be too critical. Just sort of go with it. And then after you get your arms, your two legs, and your tail drawn, you get to do what I think is the most fun part of all, which is decorating the shell. So we're gonna do that next. So let's go ahead and we'll look at our turtle shape here. And then I'm gonna start by drawing a line all the way around my shell like this. I just figured on this one I didn't do that. You could actually start with just drawing the little spots. Some people do polka dots. Some people make them more octagon um, or square, rectangle, however you would like. But I do love the swirls. So I'm going to put, and I'll show you how I did it in one second. See how I'm putting swirls all around? I'm gonna add some swirls everywhere. I'm gonna make them going all different directions too. Little ones, big ones, medium ones. You design your turtle shell any way you would like. Okay, I put all my designs on. Now, turtles also have, their, their skin on their arms is real thick and like cracks, almost like our pottery, like our clay, gets little cracks in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw like little squares to represent some texture on the turtle's arms. I'm just doing little squares. No rhyme or reason. And then I'm gonna do some on, well, I don't know, would that be a knee? Do you think a turtle has a knee? So we'll do it right here for our turtle. And then I'm gonna add in two turtle eyes. And their eyes are usually on the side of their heads. And then let's give him little breathing holes, right? Like his little nose, huh? And then once you're all done, you wanna sign it. So I am going to sign my name sign Becky on the bottom. Now some people just put their initials like I might put because my full name is Rebecca Lynn so I might put R L S Rebecca Lynn Sabo so you could do it any way you would want right pretty cool huh so also in your kit you be you can draw on your uh, in your doodle book as much as you would like you can keep practicing using your doodle sea turtle worksheet, but also in your magic box, did you see Sammy the turtle? Look at how cute he is. So there's a special thing of paint in your magic box that is only for Sammy because what you're gonna do is paint him and then you're gonna bring him back to the studio so that we can bake him in the kiln. And if you aren't planning to bring him back to be baked in the kiln, which the kiln makes him real shiny 
and all the colors get real bright, I highly recommend it. But if you don't want to bring him back to be kiln fired, you could use the same paint you would use on your canvas. But, and this is a real important lesson about being an artist, if you want him to go in the kiln, you cannot use the same paints that you use on canvas. You can only use that pack that we put in your magic box and it has a tag on it that says tips for painting pottery. All those little cups have a special glaze that can go on Sammy and you can name your turtle anything you want. But make sure when before you bring him back to us, you write your name on the bottom. It's totally okay to paint the bottom, but um, you're gonna carve your name in that paint, okay? And then you'll bring him back to us. Also included in your kit, and let me grab one so that you can see it. So this is the paint pack. See how it says tips for painting pottery? This is the paint pack that you're gonna use to paint Sammy the turtle. Now the, dr the air dry clay, you won't use the same paint that you painted Sammy with. I know that can be confusing. You're gonna use the same paint for the air dry clay turtle that you molded as you're gonna use on your canvas. Now the canvas, it's a vertical style canvas, so it hangs like this, and you have a big turtle here and a baby turtle up top, okay? And then inside your magic box, there is all these different paints and some brushes. So you can use any of these paints on your canvas, and you're gonna also paint when this is dry, and it could take three, five, seven, ten days to be dry. It won't feel cold anymore, like it won't feel wet, and it'll probably even turn more like um, a real light, lighter gray color. All right, so for your canvas, the background is the ocean. So you could do blues and maybe add white, maybe put some swirls for the ocean, some bubbles, and then paint your sea turtles any colors you would like. You could make a rainbow sea turtle or you could make them look like real turtles, whatever you prefer. So that's gonna be the rest of your activities for today. And then tomorrow morning, um, if you're gonna join us on Zoom, it's the same link every day. So um, you can go ahead and, uh, and click on the link that was in your email and join us at 9.30 or you can uh, request that I send you the video of the day as well. So um, it, it's okay if you don't come to the Zoom, we totally understand that's what's great about being virtual is you can do this anytime that it works well for you. Um, you can even share your pack with a friend if you wanted, you know, maybe the, your mom paints this turtle and you paint that turtle. We're okay with that, whatever you would like to do. So uh, we thank you so much for joining us for Sea Turtle Day today and bring your artwork with you on Zoom if you're gonna come on Zoom so you can show it off. I love seeing your creations and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye, happy doodle day.